Hey, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we're going to tackle exporting your user settings Premiere versus Avid. Let's do it. First of all, I have booted up Avid and I've come to my project screen. And uh, the way that I would export my settings in Avid from the project screen is I would go to user profile right here where it says my user profile, I would click right there. And then I would go down to reveal user profile, reveal user profile. If we want to move our user setting to a removable drive, or maybe we're going to put it on the desktop because we're going to move it to a different station afterwards. And we're going to put it on a, a drive within the Nexus uh, Avid system or similar, right? Then we would go to reveal user profile and we would click right here and then boom, it would call up a finder window. Uh, either in PC or in Mac or on Mac and we would find the user setting here's the list of all the user settings I've created and we would find that folder and we would simply drag that folder either onto our desktop or uh, let's see let's do new so let's say I could do it right to my desktop I could just drag this folder and I would hold down option and drag it to the desktop so it doesn't leave where it's at. I'm just making a copy to my desktop or to a removable drive or to another drive on the system, right? Doesn't matter, same, same. And I would grab it, hold it, hold down option to copy it to its new location. Now it's on my desktop and I can move it to another drive to my thumb drive. I could put it right on my thumb drive. If I had a thumb drive booted up in here, I could just click on my thumb drive right here. I've got iCloud drive. I could just uh, uh, click hold and I would hold down option just to be on the safe side and I would move it to my iCloud drive. Any way you wanna do it, you can do it this way. So again, those set steps were come over here, user profile, where it says my user profile name, click down here, say reveal user profile, drag it out, put it on your removable drive or your desktop or whatever. But let's say we're already in a project. I'm gonna boot this project up right here. Let's say I'm already in this project, I'm in the middle of working and uh, and someone and someone calls me up and they say, hey, we need to move you to a different workstation. And I've never been on that workstation and I want to move my settings to that workstation to continue working. Let's say an AE needs to use my station or there's going to be some kind of maintenance to my station. I could come up here to file, go down to settings, go over to user and right here, user profile. Here's my name. Click right there. Now I'm going to go all the way down to here and I'm going to say reveal user profile. Boom, reveal user profile. It will once again call up a finder window and I can drag this right out and right in, uh, right onto my removable drive or to my desktop. Now, uh, let's say I want to go the other way, right? Let's say I've got my settings now in the new project. Uh, in the new project, in the new edit suite, and I want to bring those in, I would just come here to import user profile, import user or user profile right there. And it would call up this window. I could point it to my desktop and I could say, yeah, here it is. That's the name of my user profile and say open. I already have this user profile in here, so it's going to give me an error message. And so I won't do that, but I could just say open and it would bring in my user settings and make a new folder, put that folder in the user's area. I don't ha I no longer have to find that path. I don't have to put it there myself. It will self put it in for me when I say import user settings. So import user profile and reveal user profile. Those are the two you're going to use. If you want to create new, a new user profile all from scratch, use create user profile. But for the most part, you're going to be using import user profile and reveal user profile. Those are going to be awesome for you. And there you go. Things work a little bit differently in Premiere. Join me. Okay, here we are on the Premiere side, and if you notice, if I go up here to the Premiere Pro pull-down, I believe this is in file pull-down if you're on a PC, I'm on a Mac, you want to go to, you used to be able to go to sync settings, and you could sync and manage your sync settings uh, uh, up to the cloud, and you could bring your settings down from the cloud to any place you were working. 
any place you were working. You could put it up to the uh, Creative Cloud, bring it down from the Creative Cloud. No longer. Now, if you notice, notes starting the users and organizers will not be entitled to Creative Cloud Sync files. Sync settings will no longer be available on Premiere Pro 24.3 and beyond. So you can't do that anymore this way. So you can't put it up to the cloud and bring it down to wherever you were. It was super handy when it worked, which it only worked, eh, I'd say about five out of every 10 times. Uh, even if we were to go up here to file and say close project, and we, sure, let's save, why not? And we would save this project and we would come back to this screen right here. Uh, you used to be able to uh, have a, there was a button over here where you could do the same, sync, bring stuff down. Uh, no longer, that no longer exists. There's now only one way to do it and you have to go to it on the finder level. So if you're on a PC, which I'm not, I'm, I believe you would go to your C drive and then go to your users, right? And on a Mac, we're gonna go to our finder. I'm gonna call up a new finder window and, uh, and we're gonna go to DJB, that's my little house. Uh, which would be users, right? If I were to just uh, click right on my hard drive, come up to users. Um, and we're going to go to documents. And we're going to go to, uh, we'll sort alphabetically and we'll go to Adobe. And we'll go into Adobe Premiere Pro. And now you'll see in Premiere Pro, here are all the different versions that I've had. I keep uh, I keep all my uh, all my projects in still in 15.0, uh, just because I had that folder in my doc, so I keep putting stuff in there. So I keep 15.0. But here are the most recent ones, right? Here are all the most recent ones. Uh, and if you're a normal human being, uh, unlike myself, and you put everything in the version that you're on, which would be 24, uh, you would want to click down here. And you would come all the way down to here where it says profile DJB, that's me. And then you would open that up and you would look for, here's all your archive layouts. You could actually literally just go to profile, grab that, put it on your removable drive, right? Just throw it on your remo removable drive so that you can take it to your next workstation. Uh, throw it on uh, a thumb drive, uh, a hard drive, um, as if you're in a network of stuff, you could put it on a network drive. Just bring your profile lock, stock, and barrel to your new work workstation and then drop it again in Max, my Mac Studio, in the users folder, in the DJB folder, uh, in users, that's me, uh, in documents, in Adobe, in Premiere Pro, in 24.0 and then drop this in so much easier on avid it used to be equivalent equivalently easy on premiere but they changed it and they're no longer letting us upload and download from that so this is the only way you can do it and inside this you'll notice here is my kys file this is my keyboard this is the most important thing to me i will take this out and i will put it on a thumb drive if I'm working uh, on site instead of from home, uh, if if I don't have anything else, I want to make sure I have that. But it also saves any layouts I have. Uh, it's saved. Uh, uh, here's my general settings right there. Uh, so my time code presets, my track. If I've made new tracks and track heights, those are all stored here. Uh, and uh, in this profile DJB, which is equivalent to the folder that I showed you guys over in Avid. But this is the only way to get it. If for whatever reason, you can't remember this pathway, the name of your computer, your computer hard drive, users, name of you, of your folder, documents, Adobe, Premiere Pro, and going that way to get to it. Here's what I do because I can never remember that. I go over here to the finder and I type in .kys because that's my keyboard. Then I come over here and I'd say, ah, here, 
uh, Premiere Pro. If I if I knew I had a newer one that was in the 24.0 folder, I could just go one folder back to Premiere Pro, knock on that, knock on this, and then here is my profile right there and drag it out. Or if I'm just looking for my keyboard, come down here to where it says Mac and go grab my KYS, my keyboard file. Don't go away just yet. Here's a little extra bonus for you. If you want to save your presets, let's say you've made a bunch of effects presets, right? And you've saved them all here. They show up. You want to get your effects window. You go over to window, go down to effects. That calls up your effects window. I've tabbed it in right here. And here's all of my effects presets. If I want to save these presets and take them with me to another company or to a different workstation, let's say, I could right click on presets and say export presets. Then I say, okay, send it to my desktop and I call it, you know, uh, best presets ever. And I hit save. That goes to my desktop. It comes up with a little preset icon. I can take that preset icon, drag it to my removable drive, bring the presets that I've made. Let's say I've got a bunch of, of Lumetri presets. I've got a bunch of audio presets. I take those with me anywhere I want, doing that just like that. Right click on presets, say export presets. Then when you go to your new project, in your new workstation or at your new company, click on presets, say import presets, point it to best presets ever, boom, and say open, and they will all come in and populate for you. And that is the way you bring your presets. Hey, if you're finally ready to master Avid and double your job and income opportunities, I've got a class for that. Click the link below in the description and use the coupon code YouTube24 to get 15% off on this course. Let's demystify Avid together.